Hey guys, today I have something pretty cool to show you. Today we are going to introduce my new camcorder. I mentioned it to you a few weeks ago that uh, I had a new camcorder coming for Christmas and uh, I got pretty lucky because I thought I wouldn't be able to uh, have a new camcorder since my old one died until at least next year. But uh, indeed I got pretty lucky and uh, I'll show you the new camcorder right now. Does anybody recognize this from a recent video on another YouTube channel? This is a Sony Digital 8 camcorder and this was given to me by none other than YouTube user V Westlife. You might have seen this camcorder on his video where uh, he reviewed this camcorder and another camcorder that uh, he got on eBay. But uh, the surprise doesn't end there. He didn't send me just this camcorder. He sent me both of them, both of the camcorders from that video. Here they are, right here. Uh, these are those very camcorders. And uh, I think that is pretty darn awesome. This one is a Sony DCR TRV340 Digital 8 camcorder, and it was made in 2002. And this one is a Sony DCR TRV350, and it was made in 2003. And as well as the camcorders, he sent me a bunch of accessories as well. Let's see what he sent me. He sent me a Hi8 tape to record on. Awesome. He sent a remote control, which is awesome, because these can be controlled with the remote controls. You have uh, a record uh, button and zoom controls, and you have the VCR controls. He sent me a lanyard, which uh, attaches around the camcorder so you can hang it around your neck. And uh, it's got the Sony logo on there, pretty cool. He sent me a second lanyard, so one for each camcorder. And uh, these actually came attached to the camcorders, but I uh, took them off because I probably won't have a use for it unless I'm filming something outside. A second remote control. So that's pretty cool, one for each camcorder as well. The video cable for hooking it up to a, uh, a television set or whatever. And not one, not two, not three, but four batteries. How about that? Four original Sony Info, Info Lithium M batteries. These are the slim batteries, they're all the same model and they are 8.5 watt hours and uh, all these batteries are still in very good health. Uh, the worst one, which is this one right here, which is the one I use, uh, has a capacity of about 175 minutes and the best one has a capacity of about 200 minutes, so uh, that's really awesome. And uh, it's been years since I've been able to use a camcorder with a, with a battery because the battery on my old camcorder went bad years ago. And finally, he didn't have a camcorder he could send with him. So I bought this AC adapter on eBay, just a standard Sony AC adapter, model ACL-10A. I got this on eBay for $10 and uh, I could have gotten a generic AC adapter for cheaper, but uh, my advice, just stay away from uh, Chinese generic AC adapters, nothing but trouble in uh, many ways and you could risk destroying the equipment that the AC adapter plugs into. So I paid a little bit more for a used generic one or a used uh, original one and uh, that's fine by me. Now V Westlife sold all this stuff to me. I won't tell you what I paid for it but I will say that it was a very good price and I appreciate it a lot. I've already thanked him a hundred times for it but uh, that's just how thankful I am. Uh, I really appreciate it. He gave me a great deal on all this stuff. And uh, it's allowed me to not have to go without a camcorder after all. So uh, that is totally awesome. Now I got pretty lucky I guess because uh, V Westlife had seen my video where I said announced that my camcorder died. And uh, just, you know, I guess shortly after that he managed to come across these camcorders. So he messaged me up and uh, he uh, offered both of them to me, uh, and I said, sure, I'll take them. So uh, that was 
pretty darn awesome. And also in return, as you already know, I'm sending him my old camcorder and all the tapes and all the stuff that came with it. So without further ado, uh, I'll go ahead and review these camcorders. Of course, you, you can already see if you go on V Westlife's channel a demonstration of these camcorders, but uh, I'll do the same uh, since, you know, I'm in a totally different filming environment and everything. When I decided that I needed a new camcorder, uh, although it seems perhaps counterintuitive to some of you, I wanted the most a Sony Digital 8 camcorder. And uh, there were several reasons for that. Well, first of all, um, I wanted a standard definition camcorder anyway. I, even though perhaps that's a bummer to you guys, I have no plans to switch to high definition at least anytime soon. Um, all it, all high definition does for me is it makes it harder to edit, longer to render, longer to upload, um, ton more space where I have to store it because I back up all my videos on the DVD and uh, really it's just a, a mess for me and also of course high definition camcorders are a lot more expensive than standard definition ones so I decided right there you know I wanted a standard definition camcorder and so I decided out of all the standard definition camcorders I could choose I wanted most a digital 8 camcorder and the reason is is that these Sony digital 8 camcorders especially the older ones like these ones they have a ton of features that you just don't find on camcorders today features that I like most about these old digital 8 camcorders is that they have a microphone jack both of these camcorders have a microphone jack you can plug any old microphone in it for me that would probably mean my Olympus LS7 digital recorder and uh, I can use that as a microphone and I've used the Olympus in several of my videos as you guys have known and when I do that I have to uh, synchronize it when I edit the video you know I have the audio that the camcorder records and I have the audio that the Olympus records and I have to synchronize them well with these I can just plug the recorder into the microphone jack and I don't have to synchronize anymore. Um, another feature which greatly appeals to me for several reasons is that you can actually plug an analog video, audio and video, an analog AV source into these things and you can not only record that source onto tape if you want but you can pass it right through the uh, firewire into the computer. So I could perhaps plug like my VCR plug the video into this and pass it right through to the computer and uh, I can take you know those VHS tapes and I don't have to go through one of those uh, friggin analog to digital converter things which more often than not give you an inferior quality video with these it's just a direct pass through they directly convert it into the DV format which is awesome and another reason I wanted uh, a digital 8 camcorder is that I still like to use tapes and the reason I like to use tapes is I, you know, I trust tapes more than I trust hard drives or flash memory cards, you know, for storing video. Um, more often than not, you know, I've had SD cards go bad on me. You know, when, when it comes to storing video, I, uh, you know, I think tapes are more trustworthy than anything else. And of course I had two choices for digital uh, tape recording. You have Digital 8 and you have Mini DV. Of course my old camcorder was Mini DV. And I considered getting another Mini DV camcorder. But uh, the thing is, and uh, if you don't know, uh, of course you may know that Mini DV, uh, hence its name, records video in the DV format which is uncompressed, uh, so it's very high quality. You have a very high potential for quality. It's only limited by the camcorder itself, you know, the lens and the microphone and everything. But Digital A also records in the exact same DV format. Uh, the video that's encoded on Digital A is the exact same format as the video encoded on Mini DV. So the potential for quality is exactly the same and because digital 8 tapes are obviously, as you can see, quite a bit larger than mini DV tapes, uh, I would say these can probably withstand abuse a lot better than mini DV tapes. And of course, you guys probably know that I do something that's probably not recommended by uh, people who use tapes, and that is to reuse a tape. I like to reuse tapes over and over and over until until <laughs> until the tape becomes absolutely useless. 
and that's why if you watch some of my videos there's a lot of audio and video glitches is that I kind of reuse the tape too much and I wait until there's too many glitches before I finally throw the tape away but uh these of course the tape's larger the tape is uh, wider and it's and it can probably be reused more and it's more durable as a result so that's also why I wanted to go digital eight. Now some of you, especially my younger viewers, have probably never encountered digital eight video equipment. So I figure it's probably appropriate if I give a brief history of the format. To give the history of digital eight, you actually have to go back to its ancestors, video eight and high eight. And uh, the original version of the format was video eight, which uh, was introduced by Sony in the, uh, I believe around 1985. And uh, it was introduced to compete with VHS. Video eight, which uh, uses tapes exactly like uh, its uh, successor formats, was slightly higher quality than VHS. The quality was about comparable to Betamax, which was Sony's other uh, video format of the time. So that was, uh, basically how it all started. And then, around I believe the early 1990s, Sony introduced uh, an update to the Video 8 format, and it was called Hi8. And Hi8 was basically Video 8 uh, with higher resolution. And Hi8 was introduced to compete with the Super VHS format, which was basically VHS also with slightly higher resolution. And uh, Hi8 was quite popular for, an, for a number of years. Right from its introduction in the early 1990s, Sony made Hi8 camcorders up until 2007, uh, which was quite impressive. And then the final update to the Video 8 format was in 1999 when Sony introduced Digital 8. And basically Digital 8, uh, of course Video 8 and Hi8 were analog formats, they recorded an analog uh, video signal. And Digital 8 was of course a digital video signal. And Digital 8, for the first time, allowed recording digital audio and video onto a standard Hi8 tape. And as you can see, this is a Hi8 tape as opposed to a Digital 8 tape. Um, Sony and other companies do make tapes that are specifically for Digital 8, but uh, Hi8 tapes work just fine and Sony also uh, themselves state that Hi8 tapes work just fine on Digital 8 equipment. And as a matter of fact, this particular tape actually says Digital 8. And uh, probably Hi8 tapes and Digital 8 tapes are probably exactly physically the same. Um, they just have a different name on them. And of course, Digital 8 tapes are much more expensive. So if you have Digital 8 equipment, you might as well just buy Hi8 tapes. You'll save money and it works just as well. As a matter of fact, uh, standard Video 8 cassettes will reportedly work on Digital 8 equipment, but uh, the tape, Video 8 tape is physically different from Hi8 tape and uh, Sony doesn't recommend that you use Video 8 tapes on Digital 8 camcorders. Now one problem today with the Digital 8 format, and I knew this when I was looking for camcorders and when I acquired these camcorders, is that the Digital 8 format's actually dying. Um, Video 8 went, was obsolete by the mid-1990s Hi8 was obsolete by probably the mid 2000s, if not the early 2000s. And now here we are almost to the mid 2010s, hard to believe. And Digital 8 is just about dead. Um, as a matter of fact, Sony discontinued their last Digital 8 camcorder in 2007. Uh, that was almost seven years ago. And uh, Sony, as well as Maxell, still manufacture Hi8 tapes, and as a matter of fact, I believe they still manufacture Video 8 tapes. But, uh, there are no more Digital 8 camcorders on the market, and the format is in fact dying. Um, it was superseded by Mini DV, and of course, nowadays, solid state camcorders, which record on memory cards or hard drives, have pretty much taken over. And, uh, this is a dying format, but, uh, as long as tapes are still uh, in mass production, which they are, uh, I'm not going to worry. And of course you can also buy new old stock tapes still on eBay. So now let's take a look at the camcorders. This is a Sony DCR-TRV340 from 2002. And this is a Sony DCR-TRV350 from 2003. This camcorder was the direct successor to this camcorder, one year newer. And uh, you can see just by looking at them that the 350 
is uh, a little bit smaller and lighter than the 340, but it does have a few less features. It seems as time went on, you know, the first digital A camcorders in 1999 were packed with features, but then as time went on, Sony subtracted less and less features, and by 2007, their last digital A camcorder had hardly any features at all. It, I, I think it was actually the lowest end camcorder Sony offered, which is uh, kind of sad. But anyway, these camcorders are very feature packed and uh, they are a lot larger and heavier than my old camcorder so uh, uh, they have they will take a little bit getting used to but I have been using these a lot already and uh, I like them a lot and I'm getting uh, quite used to it. So we'll look at the 340 first. Well you got your zoom control 20x optical no 25x optical zoom 700x digital although that doesn't matter at all photo button which is another dumb feature something my old camcorder used and uh, had and I never used it this one has a uh, accessory shoe and it is a smart accessory shoe if I pull this back you can see the uh, data connection teeth there if my camera will focus you've got your VCR controls right here rewind fast forward play uh, in addition to night shot which is a really nice feature which my old camcorder did not have this also has super night nice shot and color slow shutter which just uh, slows down the shutter speed. You got a uh, black and white electronic viewfinder which uh, in addition to pulling out which I just realized this recently but it also pivots like that and that is really cool. You've got an LCD display right here which is very nice and what this displays is uh, the tape counter and it also displays a battery meter and when it's charging it uh, tells you how much charge it has and uh, how many minutes are on the battery and uh, of course it's got the steady shot which is a uh, digital image stabilization down here you have controls for exposure and edit feature which I haven't bothered figuring out how to use I'll probably never use it fader control which I'll probably never use backlight which I probably likely won't use and also this has not only a manual focus feature but it's got this focus wheel which uh, the, turning this doesn't actually mechanically adjust the focus, it's all electronic, but uh, I think that's pretty darn cool. You just turn this wheel here and uh, it changes the focus and that's really cool. And then here, now this is missing the door that covers all these ports, but that's alright. You've got a USB connection, you can actually transfer video uh, via USB, although it's lower in quality than if you use the FireWire. Um, and a really cool feature of these is that you can hook these up to USB and use these as a USB webcam and I think that's totally awesome. You've got your FireWire, you've got an audio video input, uh, actually it's an input and an output depending on uh, what mode you're in. If it's an output, you know, you can play the video on the tape, uh, play it through your TV or whatever. If it's an input, you can hook this up to a VCR or a satellite receiver or whatever and record the video signal onto a tape which is really cool and you also have uh, S video which might also be both input and output I'm not sure about that on the front here stereo microphone you've got an infrared connector there uh, it's an infrared input for the remote controls but the infrared LEDs also serve as an infrared flashlight for when you're in the night shot mode which I'll demonstrate later and that's pretty cool You've got this nice uh, leather hand strap there, so uh, that's what it looks like holding it in your hand. Quite a heavy thing, heavier than a, uh, definitely a lot heavier than a modern camcorder. But that's nice because uh, I think the, the heavier a camcorder is, the less shake uh, you have when you're holding it. So over here you have your power controls, you have off the VCR mode, the camera mode, and if you look at here, there's a mode called memory. Well, what's, what's that? Well, right there is a memory stick card slot. You can actually record video and photos onto a memory stick, which that's really cool. The problem is, though, is that video recorded on a memory stick is incredibly low quality, so I'll probably never use that. I do have a couple of memory sticks, so I'll demonstrate it here. Um, you've got your record start stop button and your AC adapter jack, the place to hook the lanyard, and of course where the battery goes and then this control right here which is a wheel that moves up and down and it also presses inward and you can use that to navigate the menus and adjust other features like the exposure 
Now I was kind of surprised and uh, I was looking for it until I looked it up and found out this doesn't have it. Neither of these camcorders have manual white balance or manual shutter speed, uh, which I find kind of interesting, uh, kind of surprising that uh, camcorders, you know, as featured as these don't have those features. And uh, I'm just slightly worried because I always, on my old camcorder, made use of both features a lot. But uh, based on what I've used these so far, the automatic white balance is fine and dandy, works quite well, much better than my old camcorder. And I haven't tried uh, how the automatic shutter speed works, like when I uh, point the camera at a CRT display, hopefully that won't be too bad. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for the uh, TRV340. Um, I'll put a battery in it here to show you how the tape mechanism pops out. So you just open this door here. There, and you can put your tape in. And, oh, I'll open the LCD display here. I haven't shown that. There's the LCD display. And you have a bunch of controls in here, as well as a mono speaker. You have uh, VCR controls for the memory stick, if you're looking at video on a memory stick. Uh, display, you have volume controls. You have a title feature where you can add a title on a video. Uh, PB zoom, I'm not sure what that is. That might be the ability to zoom into video that you've already recorded and while you're playing it, you can just zoom in. You got your menu, uh, your, menu uh, your settings menu and stuff and uh, that's about it. I'll turn it on here, turn on the VCR mode first. Um, actually, I'll put the tape in. And you might be able to uh, you can hear the head drum spinning in there. Quite a quite a loud head drum. Sounds like a VHS VCR, which I think is pretty cool. But it doesn't. You don't hear it very loud on the uh, on recordings, which is good. The sound quality of this is a lot better than uh, my old camcorder, where you could hear the tape mechanism rattling and clunking all the way. But uh, we're on the VCR mode, and uh, I'll press display here, so you can see the indicators there. There's our battery life remaining. We can press play here, and you'll see some stuff I recorded earlier. That's some uh, stuff you'll see in a future video. Now the LCD display isn't quite as uh, high resolution as my old camcorder, and it's not as high resolution as that one, but you can see everything alright. We can fast forward and it stops when you let go of the button which is nice and we can also rewind so there you go and we'll stop and we can rewind the tape there and uh, I'll put it into the uh, uh, record mode here and oh got the lens cap on there, there's the video signal, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, I'll show the LCD here, there's our tape and our battery, and the D8 uh, indicator showing that uh, we're, we're recording on, we're recording Digital 8. Now these particular camcorders, not all Digital 8 camcorders can, but these particular camcorders can actually play back Video 8 and Hi8 recordings. They can't record in the Video 8 or Hi8 formats, but they can play them back, so that's really great. So if you have recordings that were made with an old Video 8 or Hi8 camcorder, you can play those recordings back in these camcorders. And you can even, uh, like any analog video source, transfer it to the PC in a digital format, which is really nice. So, turn that off there. The only thing I gotta get used to is see my old camcorder, when you close the LCD, uh, the camcorder shuts off, which of course these don't. So uh, I'm gonna have to get used to remembering to uh, turn the switch off. But uh, 
There's the viewfinder. Wow, that looks really small. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Well, you get the idea anyway, but uh, there's the viewfinder, and it has a diopter, which is good. It's got stamina, ladies. So that is the TRV340. Next, what I'll do is I'll uh, we'll take a look at the TRV350. Now, as I mentioned before, it seems as time went on, Sony took away more and more features from these camcorders. And uh, likewise, despite the fact that this camcorder was the direct successor to that camcorder, it actually lacks quite a few features. It doesn't have the LCD uh, that displays the tape and battery information. It doesn't have the manual focus wheel. And it's lacking a headphone jack. I forgot to mention this camcorder actually has a headphone jack. So uh, when you're playing back tapes, you can listen through headphones. And perhaps uh, it'll route the audio when you're recording to the headphones too. I haven't tried that yet. But this one doesn't have that. And it's also lacking the accessory shoe. But uh, it does have everything else, which is nice. So we'll take a look at it here. You got your standard power switch, record button. You got the settings, uh, you know, the wheel there to let you adjust stuff. AC input jack. And you still get the microphone jack. And this jack down here is a LAN, what's called a LAN C jack. And basically, LAN C is some sort of special digital protocol to let you control camera equipment. For example, there are LAN C compatible tripods, for example. So if you had this on such a tripod and you had it, the tripod plugged into the LAN C jack, uh, you can use controls on the tripod to control the camcorder, which is pretty nice. This one didn't come with a lens cap, which is okay, and you might be able to see this one has a very nice feature, which this camcorder doesn't have, and that is a 3 watt halogen spotlight. In addition to the night shot, you can use the halogen spotlight if you're in a dark location, and uh, it works excellent, very nice and bright, and uh, that's an awesome feature. So whenever, if I ever do any videos in a dark location, I'll be using this camcorder so I can use the spotlight rather than night shot. And of course, stereo microphone, uh, same LED receiver, which also serves as an LED uh, flashlight when you're in night shot mode. This one has a little boo-boo here. This silver plate's coming off. It's been held on with tape, but that's okay. Probably some super glue would fix that. Your night shot switch, your VCR controls, same photo button and zoom controls, same viewfinder which pulls out and uh, pivots, and it's got a diopter. And behind this cover here, which this camcorder does have, same thing, USB, it can also serve as a webcam, firewire, AV input in the form of composite and S video. And you can also do manual focus, I believe on this camcorder, you use this wheel here to adjust it. And same backlight, fader, yada yada. You also got a tripod mount. And open the LCD here, and you've got controls, you've got your VCR controls for playing video from a memory stick. And you've got your volume controls and menu controls and exposure and title and all that stuff. And speaker, and uh, that's just about it. So. We'll put this in the VCR mode. We'll put the tape in. Now I forgot to mention when I was going through the whole, uh, you know, history of the eight millimeter video format is also that while you can record on high eight tapes. Uh, on a digital 8 system, the tape time will be cut by half because the tape has to move twice as fast when you're recording and playing back digital 8 uh, data. So a Hi8 tape, a standard Hi8 tape, which has a two hour recording time, will have a one hour recording time in the uh, standard play mode on a digital 8 unit. The LCD is uh, quite a bit better than on that camcorder. Um, it has a wider viewing angle and it's higher resolution, and uh, we can press play here. And there you go. And stop and rewind. Alright, without further ado, let's shoot some test video. I'll begin with the TRV 340.
Alright, this is a test recording on the Sony DCR TRV340 Digital 8 camcorder from 2002, which came from V Westlife. And, uh, I'd say it's pretty darn good quality. Certainly better than my old camcorder. You can zoom in. Oops. I just spoiled something. That's something that you'll see in a future video, which is really awesome. That was my big Christmas present this year. My hand's shaking quite profusely. So with the video itself shaking, that's why. I guess I get to strengthen up a bit, since this camcorder weighs about twice as much as my old one. Although it's been said that uh, heavier camcorders usually help shaking compared to lighter ones. So let's get up and take a walk here. It's very liberating not to have to be tied to an AC adapter anymore. Mr. Frog. Take a look outside here. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> no manual white balance, which I'll have to get used to. I don't know what happened to my uh, Trinitron monitor, but it doesn't make that really loud noise when it's degaussing anymore. Now it sounds normal, which isn't a bad thing. Let's see how a CRT display looks. Uh, oh, I'm not in 60 hertz mode. So let me change that. Yeah, we got some black bars there. I might find a way I can work around that, but uh, if not, well, that's okay. Something I've always wanted to do with a night shot camcorder is be able to look at vacuum fluorescent displays if I turn night shot on. Uh, uh, you can't really see that one, but uh, ah yes, you can see this one. I'll cover the infrared spotlight here. Uh, oh, it's actually shining through my hands. That's how bright it is. Infrared LEDs are very efficient, I guess. Speaking of which, let's see how this does in uh, dim lighting. So I'll turn that off. I will turn this off. I'll turn this off. So now this is just with my ceiling light. I'll turn off my ceiling light. So now we're just running from my uh, 6 watt desk lamp here. And uh, something these Digital 8 camcorders were always very uh, well received for was their excellent low light performance, even without night shot and all that. So let me turn this lamp off. So now we're in almost pitch black darkness, and I'll turn night shot on. Oh yes, how nice is that? Is that cool or what? You can see everything. And uh, I can turn on the super night shot, which is night shot with a slowed down shutter speed to make things even brighter. Uh, you don't even need it in uh, this room, because this is just a small room. So I'll turn it off. Now if I turn night shot off, I can turn on color slow shutter, which slows down the shutter. And you really can't see anyway. If I turn this lamp back on and turn on color slow shutter. Yeah, yeah, that brightens things up quite a bit at the expense of a uh, very choppy video. So turn that off. Turn that on. Turn this on. And uh, I think that's about it. Um, I enjoyed the manual focus. Here's the manual focus. Probably not something I'll use very often. Um, oh, I can adjust the exposure using this wheel here. I can bring it up like that, or bring it down like that, and I'll put it back on automatic exposure. So, uh, I think that's pretty much all there is to show of the DCR TRV340. Now we will go to the 350. Alright, now we're recording with the DCR TRV350. And uh, my arm feels a lot better now because this is uh, quite noticeably lighter. And also, uh, the LCD, as I said before, is a lot clearer, so my eyes are a bit happier now. And, uh, well, likewise, very nice camcorder. Manual focus, I think, is by the wheel. Yes, the wheel adjusts the manual focus. Put that back on automatic. And, uh, we'll take a look outside. There's outside. Huh, zooms a lot faster than on the 340. Zoom all the way in on the neighbor's house. Wow. Oh, I like that. I like a fast zoom. 
See, look at this icicle here. That is a long icicle, look at that. Oh, wow. That's nice. Look at how it just focused right in on that. As fine as the head of a needle. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I'm getting some pro shots here. Let's see how this one does in the dark. Turn that off. Turn this off. Turn the ceiling light out. And uh, about the same, I think. Maybe slightly better. I believe both of these camcorders were rated for zero lux, which is uh, very good. My old camcorder would have been probably rated for something like 10 lux. There's Night Shot. There's Night Shot without the infrared spotlight, which you can turn off, although it makes Night Shot kind of pointless. And interestingly, if you look, you actually can see the infrared LEDs glowing which I have never seen before with my own naked eyes. I don't know if the uh, the cover is converting some of the infrared radiation into visible light, I don't know. And now here's the money feature, the halogen spotlight. Let me turn this off again. Turn the spotlight on. And there you go. This works really, really well. It's very bright. The only drawback, of course, is that it uh, sucks your battery life. When I turn the light on, the battery time falls from 100 minutes to 60 minutes. So, uh, sucks a lot of your battery life. But, uh, it works very well. Halogen Spotlight is excellent. So if I ever need to, uh, shoot any low light stuff, I'll use this camcorder with the Halogen Spotlight. Now, likewise, uh, you can use the halogen spotlight with night shot. Now that seems kind of redundant, but you can. So there's night shot, and now I'll turn on the spotlight. There it is, makes it even brighter. And uh, I can cover the night shot LEDs here. And there's with just the spotlight. And there's with the LEDs. And I think, yes, I can turn on super night shot with the halogen spotlight on. So you have night shot, slow shutter, and halogen spotlight all at once. And I think likewise, turn the night shut off. Yes, I can do color slow shutter as well. But uh, in a small room like this, the spotlight alone does an excellent job and uh, functions quite well as a uh, flashlight. And that's pretty much a test of the uh, TRV350. What I'll do now is I'll show you what video looks like transferred through USB and what video on memory stick looks like. This is what video looks like, transferred through USB. And here's what video looks like, being recorded on a memory stick. And of course, with the microphone jack, you can do stuff like this. And yes, by the way, you can hear what you're recording when you have headphones plugged in, including through the built-in microphone. And of course, with the video input feature, I can effortlessly record stuff like the following TV clip. It's for the win. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Today's Game on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by T-Mobile. Now finally, I'll uh, test out the remote here. So I started this recording with the start stop button. Now let's try the zoom controls. Ah yes, you can see the infrared LED there. This thing has a wide, fo wide range of focus on it.
YouTube comment poll, what color are my eyes? Holy cow. We're zoomed in all the way, and it still has focus. That's impressive. And uh, I just noticed another nice feature is that uh, there's a red LED on the front of the camera that lights up when you're recording with the uh, LCD turned around so you can see yourself. See so if I turn it the other way. No, it still stay. Oh, it's because because it, it knows they're, I'm using the remote, so that LED must light up to show that the remote's working. Well, it's all the recording controls on the uh, remote there. So we'll zoom all the way back out, and uh, I will stop the recording. Interestingly, both these remotes, despite being the same model, were made in different locations. This one was made in Malaysia, while this one was made in China. Um, they both feel pretty much exactly the same in terms of overall quality of like the button presses and stuff. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless. But that's about all there is to show of my new camcorders. My Sony DCR-TRV340 from 2002 and my Sony DCR-TRV350 from 2003 Digital 8 camcorders. I am really happy to have these. These are very nice camcorders. I'm glad that I have uh, once again a real working camcorder and uh, I thank V Westlife for uh, making it happen for me. For overall use I'll probably use the 340 because I believe, although I haven't, I've yet to listen to any recordings I've made with these, I believe the 340 does have slightly better audio, you don't hear the tape mechanism as loudly. And when it comes to any low light stuff, I'll probably use the 350 with its awesome uh, halogen spotlight. So I look forward to using these. You will see some videos recorded with this camera and my old camcorder, just because I haven't edited and uploaded them yet. But all future videos will be made with these camcorders, at least videos that I make here. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will see you guys next time.